Welcome to episode 244 of Build Your House, Your Self University by Hi You. I'm your host and fellow student, Michelle Nelson, and together we'll learn the basics of home design and construction and demystify the building process so we can build well-designed, quality dream homes with or without a general contractor. In the last episode, we discussed aging in place features that we can add to our homes that will allow us to live in them comfortably, even if we develop challenges with mobility and coordination as we age. I referred to some designs detailed in this repeat episode called Designing a Forever Home. I wanted to release this show on the heels of the Aging in Place podcast to sort of tie everything together. If you've listened to this episode before, I encourage you to take another listen to remind you of some information you may have forgotten or to simply solidify some concepts that you've already learned. So enjoy the best of Bai Hai Yu, designing a forever home. The house that my husband and I are planning to build is our forever house, the first and last house that we'll ever build. At least that's the plan. Eventually, every one of us will either rent, buy, or build our last home, the one that we'll grow old in, the one where our adult children and grandchildren will spend holidays. This week's quick tips will give you some ideas about how to design a forever house. The list includes universal design elements, meaning features that will allow anyone of any age or anyone of any level of mobility to enjoy and live in the house. But a forever house shouldn't just be physically accessible to us as we age. It should also accommodate changes in lifestyle, habits, and traditions as we progress from busy working people to retirees. Before we get to the quick tips, big thank yous go out to Jack Money. And I'm calling him Jack Money because the name Jack had a dollar sign before and after it. And also Caleb Barton 303. Thank you both for your awesome ratings and reviews. Jack Money says, whether one is working with a builder or planning to go the owner builder route, this podcast is an essential resource. And Caleb Barton 303, a future tiny house builder, says, This podcast has been a great intro to so many different areas I needed to gain a basic knowledge of. Super thankful for this. Well, I'm super thankful for you, Caleb, and for you, Jack Money, and for everyone who's taken the time to help me out by leaving a rating and a review. Those ratings and reviews show potential listeners that you find the show valuable. If you'd like to help the show by leaving a rating or review, you can actually go to buyhiu.com now, B-Y-H-Y-U.com. I've added a subscribe or write a review button that's towards the top of this week's post. Okay, ready for the forever home quick tips? Number one, make climbing stairs an option, not a necessity. I know steps and stairwells can add a lot of architectural interest to the exterior and interior of the home, but steps should be limited in a forever home. First and foremost, make your main entrances step free. Without steps, Entering the house is much easier for folks with limited mobility and issues with balance and for those who might need wheelchairs or walkers. As you get older, so do many of your friends and relatives. Make it easier for them to visit you by eliminating steps at your main front entrance. And don't just make your visitor's entrance step-free. Nix any steps of the main family entrance as well. And for most homes, that's usually the entrance from the garage into the house. Next, think about the steps inside the house. You can obviously avoid interior steps altogether by building a one-story ranch-style house. A second option is to build what I call a bottom-heavy house. That's what we're planning to do. Because we prefer the look of a two-story house, but the functionality of a one-story house, we're going to build a bottom-heavy house. All our essential living spaces, including our master suite, will be on the first floor. The second floor will be designated for extra bedrooms and a loungy game room type space where our kids and future grandchildren will hang out. The second floor will be significantly smaller than the first floor, and it will only house spaces that are not essential for daily living. Rooms on the second floor we might choose to go to, but we won't need to go to. You can also build a house with a space that could serve as a future elevator shaft in case you need to install an elevator in the future. 
Talk to your house designer about aligning closets or other storage spaces. Stack a second floor closet right above a first floor closet, and that space can be converted to an elevator shaft in the future. All right, that first tip wasn't so quick, was it? Let's speed things up a little bit. Number two, install lever door handles instead of knobs. Lever handles are easier to use than knobs, and they're stylish too. Doorknobs can be especially challenged to open for those suffering from arthritis. You'll also want to choose large, easy-to-grasp cabinet and drawer pulls instead of small knobs. Speaking of drawers, tip number three, choose drawers, not doors. When it comes to lower cabinetry in your forever home, opt for drawers instead of cabinet doors. I've said this before, but you don't want to have to get on your hands and knees to look for something in the back of a deep, dark lower cabinet. It's hard enough to do when you're in your 30s. Just imagine how uncomfortable that would be at 70. So choose full extension drawers or pull out shelves for your lower cabinets. Number four, buy comfort height toilets. Most toilets are less than 16 inches high. Comfort height toilets are 17 to 19 inches high. That makes getting up and down from the toilet a lot easier. Comfort height toilets will reduce the strain on your back and knees. Tip number five, Rethink your bathroom vanity design. Not including your countertop, the standard vanity height is 31 and a half inches. This isn't the most comfortable height for most homeowners. Raising the cabinet height to about 34 and a half inches, or even higher if you're tall, will keep you from having to hunch over to brush your teeth or wash your face. If you and your spouse have two separate vanities, you can even design them with two different heights. You'll also want to think about including some open knee space in the vanity design. Lots of women want a portion of their vanity to be open without cabinets so that they can sit down and apply their makeup or do their hair. That same open space makes the vanity wheelchair accessible. Number six, choose a curbless shower with easy to clean shower walls. A curbless shower is easy to enter and exit, even for those with limited mobility. Okay, pop quiz. How wide? does a shower entrance need to be to accommodate a wheelchair or walker? We talked about that last week in episode 67 called Designing a Perfect Shower. The answer is at least 36 inches. Larger, of course, would be better. To learn more about designing a shower for your forever home, take a listen to last week's episode. Number seven, choose an open floor plan with ample clearance in hallways, walkways, and doorways. Standard halls are about four feet wide. If you expand them to five and a half feet wide, they'll easily accommodate walkers and wheelchairs. 36 inches minimum is what you'll need for most doorways, but wider is better. Universal design dictates that in a U-shaped kitchen, at least 60 inches of clearance is needed between cabinets, walls, and appliances. In a galley or pass-through type kitchen, you'll need at least 40 inches of clearance. Tip number eight, raise your appliances so you'll have less bending and stooping to do. Use two dishwasher drawers on either side of your kitchen cabinet instead of one standard size dishwasher. That way you don't have to bend over to put dishes in and take dishes out of your dishwasher. Elevate your wall ovens, your washer and dryer, or any appliance that you can raise so that it's more ergonomic. Number nine, make kitchen islands counter height or table height instead of bar height. That way it's easier and safer for older guests and also younger grandchildren to sit down at the counter. And to be honest, counter and table height islands are much more on trend now than bar height islands. Number 10, invest in a generator, one that can power your house and any essential medical equipment that you might need during a power outage. I'll talk more about generators in a future episode. Number 11, choose non-slip, comfortable flooring. Wood, linoleum, luxury vinyl, and cork are all good choices for rooms where you'll be spending a lot of time on your feet. Those materials are easier on the joints than hard flooring like stone, tile, and concrete. Carpeting should be low pile and tightly woven, which makes it easier to walk on and roll over. Number 12, 
locate your laundry near your bedrooms and baths. Having the washer and dryer located near bedrooms and baths means less distance to carry your laundry baskets. Avoid putting the laundry in the basement or garage. I know that's where a lot of people put them, but it's not very convenient. And our last tip, number 13. Make sure you have enough room for your adult children and their families. Most people want to downsize when they build their forever house, and that's understandable, especially if your children no longer live with you. However, be careful that you don't go too small. One complaint that I've heard repeatedly is from people who downsized a little bit too much. They didn't think about what they would do during the holidays or during the summer when their adult children and grandchildren would want to stay at grandma's. Design your house so that you have enough space to accommodate the family members that you want to stay with you during their visits. You don't want to have a bunch of extra bedrooms, but think about incorporating a fun bunk room where your children can have sleepovers and future grandchildren can also sleep over. Or add a flex space to your home that can be a bedroom when needed, but act as a craft room or office during most of the year. That extra space can also be used for a future caregiver or nurse. Please remember that the purpose of this podcast is simply to educate and inform. It's not a substitute for professional advice. The information that you hear is based only on the opinions, research, and experiences of my guests and myself. That information might be incomplete, it's subject to change, and it may not apply to your project. In addition, building codes and requirements vary from region to region, so always consult a professional about specific recommendations for your home. Well, those are my forever home quick tips. I'd love to hear your ideas. What are some forever home ideas that you can think of and add to the list? Leave your tips at buyhighu.com in the comment section of this post. Thanks for listening to another episode of Build Your House Yourself University. Let's do it again next week. I'll talk to you later.